cool. All right, this is working. Um, hey guys, so I just wanted to uh, take the opportunity once now that the pack is released um, on the Unity Asset Store, the Medieval Dungeon Kit. Um, detailed one uh, to just kind of go over the block system because I realize there may not have been enough maybe of an emphasis in uh, sort of the trailer well the trailer was more of a cinematic trailer I guess just to kind of show off the um, the demo scene and, and sort of what the, the dungeon looks like aesthetically from a high level so uh, what I'll do is um, go over the way in which uh, the kit is kind of designed to work. It's a bit different to the village and the uh, castle. And if you're familiar with the polystyle version of this kit, then you should already know about the blocks. But essentially what it is, is it, it, before with the village and the castle, we had a modular, a modular kit of prefabs um, that we then used to build, to create buildings and maybe building layers. So like first ground floor, first floor, and then, you know, turrets, etc. Um, I realise not everybody might, may kind of want to be building everything completely bespoke and you, although bits do snap together, there's some overlap, um, there's quite a lot of room for uh, kind of um, artistic licence on how you smash it together. So what I wanted to do just to kind of make things a bit simpler for you is build um, a block system. So we have about 400 blocks which the base block is around six meters by six meters by 7.5 meters. Uh, if you see this sort of UI, the blue sort of box UI here, that represents a block. And we can, and you can build sort of rooms and entire dungeons out of these blocks. So a typical block, uh, let's, let's have a look. We've got like a, a ground one, for example, and go into the hierarchy and just grab so yeah, six by six stone floor trapdoor. So here's an example of a block. So you could kind of, you know, instance these, snap and you know, and snap at six meters, and they, you know, should all work quite nicely. Um, again, we've got sort of another staircase. Um, what I'm going to do after I've shown you this is, is just build a room out of the blocks and just kind of show you the construction, uh, how simple the construction is. Um, and we'll, we'll kind of go through everything you need to know with the pack. Uh, first things first, I think with the demo scene, there are, there are some game objects that have some descriptions in the demo scene. However, it may not be immediately obvious what they are, why they're there and what they do. So um, the dungeon scene is quite big. It's composed of you know, a lot of assets, a lot of static meshes. Um, but the rooms themselves, uh, there's a lot of rooms. So there, there's a lot of things being occluded behind walls and stairs and roofs and things. So one of the, one of the game objects says bake occlusion culling. So what occlusion culling is, is so it's this little menu right here. Uh, you've got, if you go to window, rendering, occlusion culling, you'll get this. So all it does is you've got to flag, and I've already flagged all these objects for you. So you, you flag in on a lay, not in a layer, in, if I grab this, it would be inspector static, where you've got static here. You've got occluder static and occlude static. So occluder um, will occlude or turn off uh, objects that are behind it. So if you've got a wall and you've got a prop behind that wall and the cameras can't see the the, the prop and that prop won't get rendered whereas if you don't have occlusion culling on then that prop will get rendered and that will in, you'll incur a cost a performance cost on that so a clue D is the thing that gets turned off so it works in kind of a voxel well, it's not really voxel it just kind of it builds it up in a voxel like way to just create data occlusion culling data that tells the system when to turn things on and off and so if you don't have that built it won't work and you might get about 30 to 50 fps 30 to 60 maybe 20 to 60 fps with the occlusion culling turned off but if you have occlusion culling turned on or baked in the main scene then you're going to be running at about sort of 50 to 120 uh, fps it's 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 odd 
definitely sun and moon. So um, you go, yeah, you go to bake, and then it should already be set up, and then you just hit bake, and then it should just work. I'll do, I'll do that here, and we can just kind of take a look. Um, I'll just change this, and then hit bake. So we should see it building up. Maybe we're not going to. Okay, let me do it on the main scene. So it's just going to take a little bit of time just to switch over. Um, so yeah, so so the grid should be around. It should be sort of six meters by six meters. That should be your sort of grid size. Um, I've got it to three meter snapping just because we have things that. Well, I don't know why actually. Maybe it's for props and things. Um, let me let me take a look. It's easy if, easiest if I just grab a point line. Um, so the blue UI that you see around a tile, uh, that is, uh, that you can turn that off in the shader. I'll show you that in a minute as well. Um, but yeah, just just the the kit is live now, so you can go and get it on the the asset store. Uh, it's on sale for the next, as of sort of this video, it's on sale for the next I think, four days, maybe five. It was a week long sale, and it's fifty percent off. So this is a it's a good opportunity to go and grab it if you want to. Get it whilst it's on sale. Um, yeah. Okay. Right. So, I'll build. I'll build the occlusion kind of. You should. You, see, you should see it build. So if I hit bake. because it's already done. I mean, this is what happens when you have occlusion cutting on. Uh, the camera is looking forwards. So here's the navigation camera, and it's looking this way. I'm going to turn gear mode on. Uh, and everything that it can't see, it's already got frustrum cutting by, de by default. Frustrum is basically the camera frustrum, and anything behind it, what the camera doesn't see, it automatically gets culled anyway. Uh, but it's just for things that the camera can see. So if I turn the camera around, you'll see the, the occlusion culling actually working. Um, but I don't know why I can't see it build. Okay, well. Normally what happens is you see, just like with these blue UI boxes, you, you see a bunch of boxes build up as it makes its way across the environment. Um, it's probably because it's already been built that it doesn't need to do it again. Um, and I haven't changed any settings. So so that so that works, so that's why you need to bake that. Um, so turn blocks, uh, turn blocks UI on off. So adjust the shader blocks underscore UI. So you can search for that just in the search bar here. Um, if you turn that off, then that will turn off the blue shader. So I can do that now if I just do blocks UI, and then I can all I, I can either turn the alpha all the way down to zero, so it's gone, or um, or you can search for, I think it's tile UI, UI, block, okay, block UI, so what you can then do, you can either do it in the prefab, or you can do it in your scene, or you could do it, you know, wherever really, I guess in the scene, in the pre or in the prefab, uh, or in like the master prefab, so um, like a room is built of prefab blocks. And you could do it in the prefab block, or you could do it in the room, or you could do it in the scene. And you just grab all of these, you can search for it here, and then just turn, literally turn it off. Uh, disable the game object, and then and then apply it to the prefab. Um, my advice is to kind of, if, if, you know, if it's a game, and you've got a coder working on your game, which I assume, I assume that you do, uh, then uh, I just ask them just to write a quick tool 
just to turn that on and off or, or just you know just a, an editor tool um, just for something like that it's just it would be helpful it's just there to sort of visualize the blocks and visualize the snapping um, let me move this across yeah, I'll zoom around it pretty quick um, sort of the, the room will do is probably something with an entrance maybe a large-ish room something with an entrance something with a, a statue some pillars um, some staircase staircases some pro and we'll, we'll set dress we'll set dress it um, but yeah we, we've got as I said in the, one of the other videos we've got quite a lot of props in this kit um, compared to the others we've, we've spent some time doing that as you can see the performance is pretty pretty good is the occlusion cutting working if I do this can't see anything now Yeah, sorry, the camera's tilted. Um. Anywho, right, let's go back to the other scene. Blocks. Yes, so I'll go to the blocks showcase, because that'll kind of showcase all of the blocks in, in the, in the kit, I think it's got pretty much everything. It's Reading Festival today, so we've got kind of everyone's. Oh, you can't see. Maybe you can see. Oh, right. <laughs> it's Brendan. Yeah, everybody's trains are emptying out, and everybody's going over there to. It's the massive music festival, one of the biggest in the UK. Um, okay, right. Okay, right, so here's, uh, I'm looking at these backwards. Here are a lot of blocks. So, steps, for example. Let me turn the UI back on. Uh, don't crash. I really don't like that bar. <laughs> okay, right, blocks. UI. Okay, so I'll turn this back on. Um, now, what we're going to do with the kit is reskin it a bunch of times. So, um, using these blocks uh, and using the base assets. So, we're doing a pirates one, uh, sort of a sci fi diesel punk one. We're doing mines and caves. We're doing um, an Egyptian version of this. So, for example, like these stairs, you'll have like a sci fi version or an Egyptian version or, a, you, know, you know, whatever. Um, Okay, right, so, you see we've got pillars, floors, doors, walls, bridges, etc. Um, let's start with some floors. Make sure these are facing actually rather than be tilted. There we go. So it's really easy just to kind of start building stuff up. Maybe we'll have a, a trap door. Actually, we'll have this and then maybe a trap door. So if I hold V, I can vertex snap by grabbing the corner of this, because um, this UI is essentially a mesh, so I can, I can just snap that. If something is off the grid, um, then I can snap this together. It's done. Nope. Oop. Oh crap. Oh. Oh. Uh, okay. Right. So these floors, there's, there's floors of different heights because you've got stairs going down and the stairs aren't obviously six meters tall. So sometimes you need other floors to kind of work as a, so this one's slightly underneath, this one's spot on, this one's slightly underneath and this one's quite high up. And that's just so you have a transition floor. 
So make sure you grab the right floor. Um, Alright, there we go. I have to snap it again. Cool. Alright. So we'll pop a bunch of these just around. You know, actually, if you've got if you've got center mm, global, if I rotate this, it's not actually going to line up. Well, maybe it does a bit. Is it translational snapping works, but I think rotational. Um, you may need to just keep an eye out for that a bit. Which I mean, it's fine. I think. <laughs> Grab some of the bridge pieces. Some other Xerox grid. Oop. Grab this one. Maybe we have some stairs on the other side. Maybe kind of cool. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty simple to build your own blocks as well. And you've just got to make sure that um, the floor's in the right place, things are lining up and you're using the grid. Just have a look at one of the prefabs and just duplicate that. And you can make your own, sort of incorporate it into the system. So I'm just... I think I'll put like a corner here, and maybe a door here, maybe a platform. Actually, so this is where we can use one of the one of the raised. Yeah, we've got we've got loads of blocks that are kind of platforms um, designed to match up against the steps. So if I, let me try one of these, and maybe this guy. That should work. Sometimes it's fine, I mean, I think it's fine to do things like this occasionally if you just want it to ma match up exactly. Um, for, for the sort of thing that you want to do. It's not cheating, honest. <laughs> um, okay. oh, quite an opposite of that over here.
What? It's all right, sometimes that happens. Um, let's have a look. Oh, I think I know what it is. Yeah, I can just do that. <laughs> That's why. It's just to cater for different types of steps and floor heights and stuff. So find the one you want, basically. And if you need anything extra here, you can just grab some of the static props, and just fit them in or build another block. This is how we ended up with 400 blocks, just because there's so many different use cases. Um, Yeah, that would. It's kind of fun sometimes as well, just figure out, figuring out what's gonna work. Oh, these are not aligned properly. Oop. You may have a tool that does this. You may want to write a tool that does this. Um, I'm not entirely sure what you would use. Maybe you would need to stick an anchor point or something on the corners uh, and then spawn and use those, maybe? I'm not sure. But doing it manually is just fine as well. Do I have post on? I can't remember. Yes. Ah, oh, let's make it symmetrical. I do like asymmetry, but for the sake of simplicity, we'll go asymmetrical for now. Uh, that won't work, will it? If you walk down these steps, you're going to walk straight into the tomb, which you don't want. Sometimes it's nice just to rotate the modules. Just, I mean, you shouldn't see that much tiling, but it's it's good just to do that anyway. Just just to you know guarantee you don't see any tiling. Right, what we're going to use against these walls is a look. Maybe we can use these. Let's use one of these statues in the middle. All this moss and lichen and stuff all over it. Didn't really know what sort of foliage to put in a dungeon. <laughs> we we're thinking about putting mushrooms and ferns maybe and stuff, but we'll probably leave that for more of a maybe another kit, I think. And also we've got we've got all the Ivy and lichen and ferns and things in, not lichen, sorry, 
in the other kits as well. There's, and I think we've got it in the free wells and props kit as well, so you can grab that. Um, but yeah, mushrooms and things like that um, you probably have in the mines and uh, the crystal mines and caves kit. We're going to have a ton of props in the market markets kit coming up. Not sure, not entirely sure about foliage, um, but I reckon some will make its way into the into the Pirates Cove version of this because we'll have like giant stalactite um, like pillars. So this small pillar here will actually be um, yeah, it would be this one. It will be like like uh, calcif calcification basically, like giant massive pillars of calcified rock. Probably show the concept art for actually. I need to find it. Um, yeah, all right, got it. Okay, so this is the main entrance of the pirates kit. It's all line drawing, so hopefully you can see it all right. Um, Yeah, so, so you, you can see sort of here you've got like the calcification of the pillars. Uh, we have like all these ropes and tarps and uh, yeah, so in instead of the the giant um, knight statues, we'll have uh, we'll have these sort of fortified areas like cannons and cannonballs and stuff. Uh, in the Actual cells and dungeons. Actually, this is the secondary main uh, main hall. Uh, but we, we're going to have like a dead pirate sitting on here, which is like a rotten dead pirate. Which is, I probably put the Zebrush sculpt that Brendan did in the Discord. So if you are on the Discord, you can see it in there. Um, you know, like fishes and yeah, the, here's the, where the trapdoor is, for example. Um, and then, yeah, this is where the cells are. So we're going to convert the cells into ja in, so jail cells. It would be more like crew quarters, like a mess hall and things. Um, so, so that's kind of the idea. Is we'll, we'll like we'll take the kit and we'll reskin it up like in, in these different ways. So you'll be able to kind of there'll be crossovers between the kits. So with the pirate kit, you might be able to grab a lot of that and use it in in the dungeon if you really wanted to in this particular dungeon, and vice versa. I wonder if I can use one of these. Mm, not really. You know what, you probably want to change your snap settings to 0.5 just because uh, vertically these are 7.5 tall. Um, so if you're snapping by 3 meters it, it won't line up. So I, I think I might just do that now. Um, right, it's set to 3 right now, so 0.5, 0 0.5. <laughs> In fact, that's why I had it on before and then I wondered why I had done that. This is why. There you there you go, so you can do that. Although, this is raised. This is the thing with steps. It throws your system off. Uh, so you've got to build blocks to compensate, which is, this is you know, <clears throat> on a normal like 2D tile dungeon 
tiling system, everything you have to deal with that so much. Um, with, with 3D and verticality, yeah, it, it can become a bit of a pain. Um, let me grab... What can I use? What can I use? I did make something for this situation. I just need to remember what it was. some of these arches. Yeah, let's do that. Me personally, I have no problem with kind of taking taking these blocks and using them as a base to then build and tweak and get stuff working, which is what you would normally do. Sort of using a kit, is you'd have it, you know, modularly snap together and work in about you know a good amount of use cases. But then you would add other static meshes in and tweak this tweak the props so that they actually work together in the way that you want them to work. I've got no problem doing that, but um, I, I do appreciate if. Um, some of you would rather it just, you know, all the blocks work with every single use case. <laughs> it's just, it's, it, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be difficult to be able to provide that because we'll end up with like thousands and thousands of blocks. Um, so hopefully this is a good base for you to then sort of prototype your own or add, you know, if you, if you find out that you need, uh, you know, different use cases then, um, to expand your library. So what I've done here, for example, is this had a floor that I've just turned off, um, and I've just dragged another floor in. So I can grab, yeah, I'll, I'll grab this one now. Now, what you could do is you could duplicate that prefab with the floor turned off, and you could just make a new prefab, and there we go. You've got a brand new block for your use case that you can just use. Um, Ideally though, I think what you would do is you would open or unpack the prefab, delete the floor, and then say, and then create a new prefab from that. And again, that's what I would do. As I would go through and build up environments and rooms, I would find these use cases and this is how we ended up with all the blocks. So, so this kind of works, I think. Let me just turn down the UI. Yeah, it works. Quite well. Um, okay, I've got a roof piece that will fill this in. I'll show you. It's probably this one. Or not. No, it'll be this, maybe. Yeah, 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 this will work. Yes, yeah, so the so what I've done with the other rooms is I've I made a game object with just the roofs in inside the room prefab. So you can turn the roof on and off, so you can use it as an RTS, or you can use it as an FPS or you know, third person if you want if you want those. I need to turn the shader back up.
just you see it fills that in, fills that little gap in. More or less. I mean, ideally, this would be you would have like a a, a black sky, so you wouldn't see this, or it would just be completely black, which I think is fine. Uh, if you really wanted to, you could go into this and just extrude it a little bit or extend it. Um, so long as you don't apply it to the prefab, it's all good. You can just make a room prefab and those changes will be in the room prefab instead of those. So I can, I can take this across now like this. And you can do that on the other side as well. So we're starting to build this room up. We kind of got our foundations in place, I think. So what we want here is a wall with a floor, and you find those over here, these guys. So we might, might grab one of these, make it interesting. black boxes are just sort of filler boxes just in, instead of having a wall that's then just floating I thought it'd be nicer if you have this it's also potentially good for light baking however like you're gonna need to um, create UV 2s or light map the UVs in the FBX X import settings um, yeah, it's starting to work all right we'll do this on the other side as well You see, if you if you're familiar using the village and the castle kit, you can see that this is just a lot a lot simpler just to use. Um, it'd be nice to do some exterior kits, um, maybe a version of the village kit or the dungeon kit, which uses this block system down the road. It's just it's a nice idea. I'm not sure when or if we will do that, but um, there's no harm in you guys doing it yourself. Just sort of using the principle of this importing the village or the castle kit and building your own blocks. I mean, that's that's also something that you could do. And then it would also work with this dungeon as well. Or like, in terms of a block form. The the art style should work with the dungeon. It's using the same... It's using the same IMM sculpts for like bricks. Uh, using the same shape, uh, substance materials. Um, very similar sort of style of sculpt. Um, yeah. It should match up one to one. If any of you had been sort of following from maybe 20, during 2020, uh, we did something called Blueprint Wednesdays. So I wanted to try and do a building every Wednesday and live stream it. Um, and I think this is probably where the idea for this came about, just because I found out that it just it was quite a creative process using the kit in a sort of a, in a modular and a bespoke way that. Um, you ended when you end up trying to use steps and do some sort of, you know, oddly ver you know vertical building something interesting. Um, it it takes uh, quite a bit of iteration, which is fine. I mean, it's normal. It's, it's sort of normal environment art sort of iteration. However, I was thinking, well, I want to get this done in like half a day or a few hours. 
So, and I'm pretty sure so do you guys. So it might be easier just to kind of have a snapping system, like a modular system that is more like Minecraft, as in you know, block, 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 block. Um, that's how this kind of was born. Let me go and get another wall piece. Might actually grab a door. I've never seen that before. <laughs> what? What? What just happened? Unity. <laughs> See the loved ones? That's weird. Anyway, we'll, we'll try that again. Yeah, Unity does that sometimes. Just throws a wobbler. Right, I'm gonna screw your shading up. No reason whatsoever. Because I'm Unity and I like to crash. Actually, no, it's gotten less buggy. Um, I haven't had, I haven't had a Unity crash in a long time. Actually, I used to get it periodically, <laughs> but it's actually, it's actually not too bad now. Um, goes here. You gotta have a door, but the door's gonna be too tall. We'll, we'll figure that out in a bit. Um, no, I'll grab a corner. I'll show you the corners. because I haven't got all the pre-cabs out. Cool. 
corner, 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 corner. No. Nope. I know what I did. Alright. Watch this. Boop. Boop. Corner. Got this weird little gap here, but you could put, I don't know, like a rock or something there. Um, also, you're not going to see it, you'll be here. Maybe a gargoyle, if we had gargoyles, that'd be cool. Um, some kind of prop, lighting prop, maybe. I don't know. These floor pieces also have an underneath, so you can do stuff like, hmm, not that maybe, well, we could do that, looks a bit weird though, um, this is why we have this guy, which is has it slightly under the bounding box it works well as a roof. Now, ideally, I would have made a half of this so that like the other half or the other side was capped, but I haven't. So, I don't know, kit bash it if you need it. It shouldn't be too hard to do. You just like take it in a max or blender or whatever and just slice it and then save it as a new FBX. Maybe I should do it, in hindsight. Yeah, so let's match this up. There we go. Okay, so we've got, right, there we go. Cool. I mean, the thing is though, you're not going to be looking up a lot of the time. You're going to be looking down. Well, all right, if it's an FPS, maybe. There's not a lot of them. Um, they're relatively low poly. I think. Background. Um, so about half that. If, you know, I reckon I've got a mesh in here that is one of like half of these. I'll add one as an update. I think it's a no-brainer. Now all we have left really and all that bit. And there's no lighting. Oh, there's a direct light. Let me stick a reflection probe in there.
be a light. the skybox because we're not outside. What I will do is change it from skybox to color. I just have the color that we had in the other dungeon. just hue shift it so um, I guess it's cooler outside and then as, as you come inside I've just shifted it up a bit just to get color gradient don't know why actually um, normally when colors get when light gets darker or warmer or cooler you do a hue shift instead of a light like in, instead of the intensity value so what I could have done is brought this same one in and then just reduce the intensity, but instead I brought the same one in, kept the same intensity, and just done a hue shift. And it kind of does the same, but keeps the illumination up. Sort of. block UI off now, I don't need it. So I'll, I'll put point light behind some of these guys. We've got some blue one, blue um, candles as well, they might work better actually. At the moment, we'll use these. I tend to go warmer, the smaller, at the light source, I think. Um, and then when it gets quite big, like a standing candelabra, if the if the um, if it's still an orange light, then I'll just make it sort of slightly less saturated, a bit more yellow. Um, and the smaller ones, I guess because, you know, if, if you get a really ready, a red flame, then that's going to be cooler than a blue flame or like a white flame. So that's, that's kind of the technique I use. It's not really a technique, it's like just some principles. The reason I can use quite a few of these point lights here, um, if you really wanted to be optimized, well I'm using deferred, so it shouldn't really matter, I think, so much with regards to per pixel point lights, but um, so long as the attenuation, uh, so long as the bounding circle of the, or the range of the point lights is small, um, and you haven't got 10 lights overlapping. If you had 10 lights overlapping this one game object, then you're essentially rendering that game object 10 times. Uh, especially if it was forward. I'm not sure how it works in deferred though. Um, but if, as long as you keep the range on these lights relatively small, then it's, it's not too bad. 
Oh look, it's doing the same thing. Why are you doing that? This one's doing it too. Ah, uh, you know what it is? The light map. Got auto generate light mapping on. This is a light mapping thing. Let me clear the bake date. There we go. Right, it was a light mapping thing. It wasn't Unity. Well, it was kind of Unity's fault, but um, if you have generate light mapping, yeah, and like the UVs aren't completely set up. It will give you weird results like that in the shadow maps and reflection maps and stuff. So with these point lights, what I'm doing is just adding them in to fill the space and kind of sculpting it the same way you would consider bounce light with GI, so you don't necessarily always <coughs> need to use GI. Bless you. Um, it's going to be, you can use an array of point lights. So if you imagine, so you've got this, this quite bright light in here, and it's coming through, through the door, hit probably at an angle, hitting the floor, bouncing up and illuminating this space. So you've, you, you have, this is lost energy, so it's going to be, I guess, warmer. So I'd bring it from the, the blue down through the greens um, where it feels warmer because it's, well, no, okay. <laughs> this is actually, Penny's dropped. The, people think blue is cooler when in it, and it is, but really blue is hotter. What's with, what's with that? Um, anyway, yeah. I've got another point light. I'm going to turn the point lights off. Uh, not point lights, direct lights. So up here, I haven't got any, I haven't got anything yet. But so you can you can use color the same way that you use black and white for contrast and depth. So black and white is just two opposites. But you can look at the color a color wheel and go, I'm going to take two opposite colors and do it the same way. So like red and blue, I think, um, for example, blue and I mean let's grab one like. So here's the colour wheel. So if I'm looking at this sort of greeny, bluey light, um, did I just close that? No. If I have a look on the colour wheel, it's probably around here. So you want an orange, nice orange light. Um, and then as you skew it towards green, then it starts to skew towards purple, etc. So this is why this actually should really probably be skewed a bit more towards ready and orange. I might want 
boost the saturation as well. Just another thing is whenever when other things get whenever the light loses energy, like yeah, if you have shadows or in crevices and stuff, the saturation goes up. And when things are lighter, the saturation goes down. So um, that's one helpful way to think about it. So I might make this one up here. There we go, you see? So you get that kind of two-tone effect for the contrast, to, to create a contrast and create sort of a depth. So if you've got a 3D object and you've got like a red and a blue or an orange and a green, um, it's like, it's like having shadow and a single point light, but a bit nicer. You get a bit more information. I don't know what I'm going to do up there, but we can start adding some candelabras. Materials. bunch of single props, a load of prop groups, you see all the candles there. We want um, prefabs. Again, so we've got this greeny light here, and we've got an accent colour from the orange, um, the orange candle. So we can grab one of these. it a bit, cool it down because it's a lot sort of a hotter light maybe. Mm. Yeah. Sorry, I've only just seen the chat. <laughs> Sorry, guys. One sec. Um, da, 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 da. Video. No, uh, it doesn't really look that much. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, <laughs> mazel tov. Um, yeah, if you're still here. Um... Oh, I know. The irony is real, right? <laughs> Unreal how. <laughs> whilst wearing a Unity, whilst working in Unity. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> um, uh, are these all built using IMMs from Medieval Set? Um, not all of them, no. Uh, sort of a few of them. Quite, quite a lot of bespoke. Probably about 70 to 80% are from scratch. Um, IMMs. So they're not, not everything is from the village and the castle. We just kind of like picked a few choice sort of things, uh, but most of it's from scratch. Um, ZBrush videos. Um, it's kind of a tooling, so we, we tend to try and keep that in the house. Um, but I don't mind kind of going over sort of what we're doing in Unity and maybe, and maybe Unreal. Um, but what I would suggest with ZBrush is go back to sort of traditional illustration techniques and then apply that to your sculpts. I think, you know, in terms of silhouette, surface, detail, how much, the ratios of scale, thickness, etc. Um, in terms of, in terms of like tech, like technical, ZBrush technical stuff, I, there's, there's plenty of tutorials that do it a lot better than what, what I 
I could do on here. Oh, okay, pirate kit time scale. Um, don't know, the sculpts are like most, I think a lot of the props are done after Christmas. I think after New Year's. I think it's probably going to be around about Feb. February maybe. Um, so yeah, all of those kits will be coming in the New Year. Cheers, guys. Right. Um, let me turn this down. We can grab one of these. One of these. Sometimes it's better to put a light source in first and then figure out how you can find some context for it that looks like it's lighting it properly. Um, so like here, I want to light this up. It'd be nice to have it more sort of greeny blue. argument for putting the point lights in the prefab, the lights prefab, but the thing is sometimes you want to have them in different places, sometimes you don't want them at all. Um, so I haven't done that.
Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, the blocks the blocks help a lot. I think they, they definitely speed up sort of getting laying stuff down, like blocking out a uh, pardon the pun, blocking out the um, sort of the overall structure of some of a space that you want. So you can use these little bottles and pots and weapons and things just to kind of fill out the cracks and crevices. You can probably grab a lot of the rock assembly, so you've got like big boulders and then rubble assembly objects from the village and the, or the castle and maybe the wells and props. And you can use those and just intersect them. You see these corners, you kind of want something in those corners and you can definitely grab some, the castle will definitely have them. Um, yeah, that would work quite well. You know, it'd be nice carpets for these steps. Are you using vertex snapping? Yeah, sometimes. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll turn on the blocks UI again. Um, I don't use vertex snapping for the props. They, because there's collision on the ground, um, this, the, sort of all the all the green bounding boxes you see, that's all collision meshes. So that's they were, it was built using uh, bot box collide, well no, box prims which already have box colliders on and then you remove the meshes. Um, so when you drag a prop in it will automatically snap it to the collider. Uh, if I do need, the thing I use vertex snapping for is just, yeah, the blocks. So, um, so like this block for example, if it was slightly off the grid, if it came in slightly off the grid, then I would make sure it's orientated correctly and then vertex snap it in place. Um, just with like like that, and then and then that works. Um, this UI helps because uh, it also because it, it's a mesh, it gives you it gives you something to vertex snap, which is which is good. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna leave it there. Um, you can do see so you can do kind of quite a lot. I reckon with the kit in terms of like a base dungeon. Um, okay, that's. Um, so yeah, it, if you pick it up uh, and have a play around, it'd be great to hear sort of how you get on with it. If there's anything you'd like to see um, you know, adjusted for improvements, or if there's anything that you think is working really well and you want to see carried over to other packs, that'd be really useful as well. Um, so we're, we've got a Discord channel. Uh, if you go to the description on the store page, 
there should be a link to sort of Twitter, YouTube, Discord. There should be a Discord invite link in the Discord uh, button link thing. Um, then you can sort of, the, there's quite a lot of people in there. I think as of now, there's maybe, uh, there's 175 online. Uh, I don't know, a bunch, maybe a thousand or so. Um, sort of there, the offline at the moment. Um, we're, we're there if you need to chat, if there's anything urgent that you kind of want to help with, then feel free to kind of get in touch. Um, we use Discord for our develop, internal development um, chat as well, so we've got a separate chat, the Astrofish chat for that. Um, but we, we do kind of post sort of updates of where the kits are at when we release new kits, announcements and things like this. Um, so yeah, and no, I thanks very much for watching. And I mean, if you if you wanna if you have any questions before you pick up the kit, then do let me know. Um, I'll be happy to kind of have a chat about it. Uh, the if you want additional assets to work with this, the the detailed medieval village, castle, wells and props, and there's a demo one. I think the demo one is included though in in the uh, in the village now. Um, they're all available on the assets Unity Asset Store as well. Uh, we have got the the uh, the medieval village on Unreal Engine. Uh, I, the castle's done. I just need to fix the lighting and really push it through Unreal's. Um, QA process, which is pretty grueling. Um, so I'll I'll do I'll see if I can get that done. I just need to get my head down. Um, but yeah, cheers, guys. Uh, as always, sort of you know, like and subscribe and all that. So cheers. See you in a bit. Bye.